Bibles, if you would, go with us to the second, second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5. After the brothers give us a song of their choosers, we'll be back with the message for the morning. <laughs>
got the word, would you please stand at this time? We're just going to give one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. You know what? Let us read that together. Let us read it together. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creature. All things, All things passed away. Behold, All things come new. Come Hallelujah. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come now, we approach your sacred throne. God, we ask right now that you endow us with your Holy Spirit from the crown of our heads to the soles of our feet. Speak, Lord, through these lips and clay the words you desire your people to hear. Not their ears, that they only not only be hears, but doers of your word. And God, as we stand on the wall of this gospel, we ask these blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. A new assurance for the new year. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine and of salvation.
assurance. New assurance. Sometimes we need that assurance. That's why I said blessed assurance. Because we can, uh, as Sunday school lesson taught us this morning, promises. We can make promises all that we want. But sometimes we're not assured that we're going to keep them. As our teacher made us aware that sometimes circumstances and situations arise that it seems like we're not going to keep our promises. But the commentator that, that wrote the lesson let us know that sometimes, even though it, uh, the promises that are made, sometimes it takes longer than what we expect. Because we live in a society nowadays that we expect things to happen right away. Yes. Huh? Yes. I mean, you know, uh, it would be good to think that, that uh, yeah, I mean, if you wanted to bake a cake and say, let's have a cake and it right there on the table. But as you all know, you've got to get your ingredients together. Then you've got to combine everything. And sometimes uh, it depends on what kind of cake you're making that you have to put in one egg at a time. Yeah, I mean, you got to take time to let the butter soften. you got to take time to let everything come together. You just can't instantly make a cake and expect it to come out good. You know, that's the, that's the assurance of God gives us that when he makes a promise to us that he's going to keep it. And if it takes a little longer than what we expect, we can really think one one thing. That whatever God got for me is good. Come on, somebody. And, and, and the thing about, about this, this instantaneously thinking that we got this assurance from someone else, we need to rethink that. Somebody said, well, I'll be by to pick you up at a certain hour. The hour will come and no show. You don't know where the car broke down, where they got their car stolen, or whether they got shot, or they got sick. Circumstances, situations happen that will keep some of us from the assurance we give everybody else that we'll be there or not. Sometimes it just don't come about. But one thing that I like about what God's assurance do for us. We have assurance in God over doubt. You don't need to doubt God. And the old song that they used to sing in church, and I know that some folks still sing it, you can't make me doubt. Huh? I know too much about it. If you know all about God, then why sometimes you just question and say, God, why? If he delivered you once, he'll deliver you again. Because there is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do the same for you. You just don't need to have any doubt. John Chapter 10, verse 28 says, And I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man uh, be able. In other words, take them out, pluck them out of my hand. They won't be able to do that. That's an assurance that once you belong to God, He's got you. Amen. Have you ever felt like God had your back? Yes. Hmm? Have any of y'all ever driven on ice before and you caught fish tail? Yes. And you call out on Jesus' name? Yes. Lord Jesus! And all of a sudden you caught your straight right out? Yes. Huh? God's got your back. Amen. Have you ever been in a situation or so sick that you felt like you couldn't call on? Head hurt and it felt like somebody had an axe in your forehead. Yeah. Somebody just hit you in the back of the head with a hammer. <laughs> huh? Have you ever been in a situation that you seemed like you just didn't know what to do? Yeah. And all of a sudden you called on God? Yeah. He said, I've got your back. Yeah. God was able to just hold you in the hollow of his hand. And he kept you there. That's an assurance that we have if we don't have any doubt. Secondly, we have an assurance over our temptations. Yeah. That old song said, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. But I declare, the devil make it plump, pretty, and clean, don't it? Uh, I, I, I don't know how many of y'all have ever seen the re 
reality show Temptation Hour. Well, let me tell you about this thing. It, it, it's, 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 it's an hour where it's set in the Caribbean. And, and to set the scene for you, everything is so tranquil, it's beautiful. Water, turquoise, blue, and palm trees, soft trade wind blowing. And they have this humongous house, got a swimming pool and all the amenities that you could ever want. Many rooms there. And, and what they do, they have these four couples that want to test their relationship. Okay? So what they do, they separate the women from the men. But before they separate them, what they do, they bring out a group of women, about 10 of them, and a group of men. So the man or, or the host of the show gives the couples a necklace to put on to show that they are tied to somebody. So he says, now, I want you, to, and they let all the women and men, they introduce themselves to the, the four, four couples. And then he said, well, I want, I want you to do is take that necklace off and put it on one of the people that you don't want your partner to have any contact with. <laughs> so they do that. Some of them don't. They just keep it on. Okay. Now what they do, they separate the men and the women. And they put the men with the ten women and put the four young ladies with the ten men. So they have an opportunity to sit down and get acquainted and all of this stuff. And finally, they, they record all of this stuff and the relationships are they're tempted by all of this other stuff. They thought they were in love. They thought they had a tight relationship. And they just get tempted by these other folk. And so when they call them back together, they have an opportunity to see what their partners have been involved in. Oh, temptation is something else when it's looking good. Temptation is something else when the devil presented in such a way that he, he confuses you. That's why God said, you're not too temptation. But if your relationship is strong enough in him, you don't have to worry because you have the assurance that I, you owe any temptation. Revelation 3 and 10 says, Because thou hast kept the word of thy patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them ah, that dwell upon the earth. You're going to get tried sometime. Yes. Temptation is going to come when you need to... You want to say some stuff. Peter want to come out, but don't don't yield the temptation. You're God's child. Amen. There are certain things that ought to come out of your mouth that shouldn't come out. I mean, you don't expect them to come out of somebody. That, but don't yield the temptation. I know that sometimes you get so frustrated, even with your family. You get so frustrated that you want to say some stuff. There's people on the inside. Yield not to temptation. Things that you say can wreck a relationship. Things that you do can call harm to somebody else. Some folk feeling are so fragile, things that you say will wreck their future. So have this assurance that God still got your back. He will guide you in the things to say. Just be patient in delivering your words. Thirdly, we have this assurance forever. Why do you say that, Pastor? Because Psalms 121, verse 8, we said it in our responsive reading. The Lord shall preserve thee. Huh? He shall preserve thy going in, going out, and thy coming in. From this time forth and for even forevermore. God got us. If we just realize that we have the assurance of his word. Amen. If it's planted in your heart to know how to reach him. Oh, I heard, heard of 
songwriter said, how to reach the masses. Huh? Men of every birth. Amen. Jesus already said what you had to do. What? If I be lifted up from the earth. Come on, somebody. I need some Bible readers in here. I'll draw all men unto me. You don't have to worry about those things because of this new year. If you be in Christ, you should be a new creature. Amen. All those old things that you used to do and used to say, in every place that you used to go, should be passed away. And God has already said, Behold, I make all things new. If you are a new creature in His hand, whatever was old, He makes new. Yes, I, I know that sometimes we bring these old things and old feelings over into a new year. We make promises that we know we got going to keep. Amen. Some of us made a vow <laughs> that I'm going to lose weight this year. Right. You don't know, but the devil will tempt you on the very first day. Yes. Sit down to the table. That potato pie yes. filled with sugar. So look good. That old hog head of barbecue. So look good. But I know what I said at 12 o'clock midnight. I said I'm going to lose some weight. But how are you going to lose it if you're going to eat what you need to eat? But the word said, put your trust in me. I will lead you to greener pastures. If we are new creatures in Jesus, let this year be a new way that we're going to talk, we're going to walk, we're going to show the world that we are old, that old things have passed away. I'm going to present myself as a new creature in Christ. He washed me with his blood. He shed on Calvary.
he'll stand on God's word and he yes. will stand on his. Amen. He has not made a promise that he's ever broken. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. He's never made a promise that he has broken. So stand there, just stand, Amen. and everything will be all right. Yes, sir. I, I declare unto you, he didn't die for nothing. All right. He got up with all power Amen. in his hands. Yes. He didn't die for nothing. Amen. He died for you and I. Yes, yes he did. Glory to God. He washed our sins away with his blood. Amen. Yes, he did. Yes. He didn't die for nothing. So all I'm telling you to do is just stay firmly in his hand. Amen. Have the assurance that God got your back. I don't care how it look. I know things come on what come on you. Situations get dim and dark. Yes. They do. Yes, they do. Huh? Sometimes you can't even hold it. You just, your mind gets so terrible, you say, I just can't see my way out. Yes. But if you just turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. Yes, Am I right about it? Amen. Well, then give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. If you agree with that, say hallelujah. hallelujah. I'm a new creature. All things, all things, old things, all things have, passed have passed away. Glory to God. And this choir shall sing. We ask you to stand to your feet now. We extend the gospel invitation.